بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد continuing with the uh, series that was started last week entitled the heaviest of deeds today we have a new topic pertaining to the etiquettes of the tongue the good manners pertaining to the tongue Islam through its mercy Allah has given us teachings that if we were to implement them not only do they give us huge rewards in the hereafter but they give us happiness tranquility and peaceful coexistence in the dunya if we were to implement them the more you reflect upon these teachings the more you can only thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these great and beautiful teachings that we do not deserve yet we have them without having to think hard or to stress our minds in terms of reaching these conclusions you've given them to us through revelation in the Quran and the Sunnah and if we were to implement them we would be a much happier state of people so today's lecture as I mentioned is pertaining to the etiquette of the tongue and Islam has much teachings through the Quran and the Sunnah and the statements of the righteous Sahaba and those after them pertaining to this issue because the one who uses his tongue in a correct manner will find that he will get lots of reward from Allah Azza wa Jal. And the one who uses it opposite to that in a way which is vulgar, using terms and words which are not liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let alone the creation who has decency in their hearts, you will gain a huge disappointment in the hereafter. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa making this clear said in Bukhari, in al-abd, لا يتكلم بكلمة من رضوان الله لا يلقي لها بال يرفعه الله بها درجات. The Prophet ﷺ said that a person, a slave of Allah Azawajal, will say a word. He doesn't think about this word. He didn't give much thought to this word. But this word is from the pleasure of Allah Azawajal. It pleases Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And due to that word, Allah Azawajal continues to raise him ranked high in Jannah. For one word which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then the converse is also mentioned in the hadith. And verily a slave of Allah may speak a word which he doesn't ponder or think about, doesn't give much weight to. Yet this word displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and due to that he is sent deep into the hellfire. We ask Allah's protection. The Salaf, they knew the dangers of the tongue because they would comprehend the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ and the verses of the Quran. That's why Abdullah ibn Masood, one of the foremost companions of the Prophet, ﷺ, he said, Ma shay ahwaj ila min al -isan. He said, There is not a thing that deserves to be imprisoned more than the tongue because the tongue never gets tired. It doesn't stop moving and it can be so harmful. Once you say those words, you can't get them back. The words that we speak without thinking, are they pleasing? Are they displeasing? We don't think about them. They can land in someone's heart. They can break somebody's heart. They can break a family up. They can start trouble in society, organizations, etc. So we should be extremely careful as to what type of speech we choose if we do indeed choose to speak in the first place. In Tirmidhi, we have the hadith where Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, another great companion from the companions of the Prophet sallallahu he asked the Prophet sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, are we taken into account for what we say with our tongues? He was a bit, you know, perplexed, a bit surprised that even what we say we're going to be taken into account for. So the Prophet sallallahu said, فَكُلَتْكَ أُمَّكْ يَا Mu'ad. هَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسِ عَلَى وُجُوهِمْ فِي النَّارِ the Prophet ﷺ said to him, May you be bereaved, may your mother be bereaved of you, O Mu'ad. Is not a person thrown into the hellfire or upon his nostrils, face down in the hellfire, except due to the harvest of his tongue, due to where his tongue is reaped? That is the reason for many of the creation 
to be thrown into the hellfire. We ask Allah's protection. You see here, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith something a bit strange. What did he mention which was a bit strange in the hadith? What did you find? Yeah, this statement, right? May your mother be bereaved. So this statement was common in the time of the Prophet ﷺ amongst the Arabs. It was a common statement. But the ulama, they explain, it's not a dua. The Prophet ﷺ is not making dua against the person. I mean, the Prophet ﷺ is not intending anything of that nature to take place. It's just a statement of zajr. It's a statement of kind of telling the person off. And it was something which was common in the culture then. So don't let your mind go. How can the Prophet ﷺ be telling us about to be careful with the tongue? And yet here he is making dua against Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu. No, it wasn't a dua. It's just a statement without intending that anything of that nature befall the person. But it's a statement of zajr, a statement of telling off. From the good manners of speech pertaining to the tongue, of course, is don't feel that you have to speak about every single topic. Don't feel that you have to be a chatterbox, involved in every conversation, replying to every single statement that is said in front of you. Don't be afraid to be silent. You know, today many of us, we get very nervous if we are silent, we feel something is missing. But silence is so beneficial to your mind. Gives you a time to contemplate. Gives you a time to switch off from all the noise that's out there in society. So don't be one of those people that you can't, you, you can't feel tranquility unless you're making noise or surrounded by noise. Feel free to be silent at times. Feel free to be measured in the words that you use because being measured in words gives you wisdom and is a sign of wisdom. And it will give you a status in the eyes of the people. The one who talks the most ends up being belittled amongst the people. But the one who remains silent at times ends up having a status amongst the people. So many times, youngsters especially, due to peer pressure, they're pressured into talking about things that they don't really want to talk about. Or they're pressured into behaving with their tongues and speaking in a manner which resembles those of the rap stars, etc. Yani in a very lowly manner. They themselves don't want to speak like that, but it's peer pressure. The Prophet ﷺ said, as we should remember, Man kan in Bukhari, man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir, falyaqul khair aw liyasmut. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever believes in Allah Azawajal and the last day, then let him speak good or remain silent. If you don't have anything good to say, you don't have to speak. And don't feel that you're going to lose friends. And don't feel that you're going to be an, an outcast because you're not brash and loud. No. People will respect you. People respect you and they want to be around you if you have other qualities. Not the quality of your tongue. If you're kind, if you're generous, if you're intelligent, if you're always there helping people, if you're diligent in the way you work, if you're strong of character, people will respect you. Even if you don't engage in so much talk. So never feel shy or embarrassed to be a little bit quiet as compared to everybody else. Ibn Hajj al-Asqalani pertaining to this hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, speak, uh, whoever believes in Allah in the last day, then let him speak good or remain silent. Ibn Hajj al-Asqalani, he said, rahimullah, he said, this is an example of the Prophet ﷺ, jawami al-kalam. Jawami al-kalam means that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, inni utitu jawami al-kalam. Verily, I was given comprehensive speech, meaning that he could say a few words, but encyclopedias and chapters and books would be written about these words. So here when you see the Prophet ﷺ say, speak good or remain silent. Good meaning all types of good that is required in life. Good advice, good words of dhikr, good words of enjoying the good and forbidding the evil, and stay away from all types of harmful words. So the Prophet ﷺ, as you see here, he would mention a few words, but they would be so comprehensive in their meanings. Prophet ﷺ, as a glad tidings as he would love to give, his companions and to the ummah at large, he gave us a glad tiding that we should ponder upon. And in fact, maybe write it in our phones and elsewhere so we see it often. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ يَضْمَنْ لِي مَا بَيْنَ لَحْيَيْهِ وَرِجْلَيْهِ أَضْمَنْ لَهُوَ الْجَنَّةِ The Prophet ﷺ said in Bukhari and Muslim, whoever guarantees for me that which is between his two jaws and his two legs, I guarantee for him Jannah. Meaning that your tongue is only going to be used in the pleasure of Allah Azawajal. And your private parts are only going to be used in the way which is halal for you to use. Then for you, the Prophet ﷺ said, your Jannah is guaranteed. So we need to think about this the next time we open our mouths. And I'm not saying to you, don't be a person of speech. 
be silent like a statue. No. Speaking to your friends is a way of putting love and a way of bringing you closer to people. Speaking can be a way of making people happier. Speaking can be a way of, pe of taking the stress that people are suffering away from them. So many things you can benefit with your tongue. But we have to think, is it beneficial? If it's not beneficial, remain silent because we don't want to lose out on the reward in the hereafter. Many people, alhamdulillah, they train themselves to always think before they speak. So it's as though they are always getting sadaqah. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, protect yourself from the hellfire, even if it be with a piece of a date. And if you cannot find that piece of a date to give away in charity, then give away good words. Protect yourself from the hellfire with a good word. So a good word, this hadith is telling us, it's like a charity. You can spend your whole day getting charity. Your whole day you can be piling up the deeds so that you come on the day of judgment with mountains of deeds from what? From that tiny thing between your jaws, which is the tongue, as opposed to having so many bad deeds in the other side of the scale. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. Ameen. Some people, they get into a habit of speaking so much, they don't control themselves from speech. They just let themselves go and go. And a side effect of that is that they become people who are very argumentative. Because they always want to talk. They always want to put their point across. They always want to be the one who has the last word, so to speak. So they're always arguing. And they're that kind of person with their tongue. And this is something which is not liked in Islam. The Prophet ﷺ narrated... As, sorry, the Prophet Sallallahu said, as uh, collected by Abu, Abu Dawood, may Allah be pleased with him, the hadith scholar, the Prophet Sallallahu said, أَنَا زَعِيمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ فِي رَبْدِ الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْمِرَاءِ وَإِنْ كَانَ مُحِقًّا The Prophet Sallallahu said, I am the guarantor for a person to have a place in Jannah, for the one who leaves alone disputes and argumentation, even if he is in the rights. Even if you are right, leave it off for the sake of Allah Leave it off because you don't need to have that last word. If you've made the point clear and you've said it politely, that's it. People just want to debate and argue with you over every, every semantic of the conversation. Just leave it alone. Let it go and you get a huge reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only do you get the reward, but it saves you the state of mind. So many of us in the offices, we're just trying to have a general conversation. We're just trying to give a piece of advice, but people turn it into an argument. It's okay, leave it. You've said your point, you said it nicely, leave it alone. And this especially applies to matters of the deen. That's why Imam Malik, rahimullah ta'ala, he said that the sunnah is just to explain and leave. Just explain the point, don't debate with the people, and leave it alone. Let it go. So here the Prophet ﷺ in the hadith is saying, if you do that, then you are from those the Prophet ﷺ will guarantee for you a place in Jannah. Imam Shafi, Rahimullah Ta'ala. He said, Ma kalam tu ahadin qat. Wa ana ubali. An yubayin Allah Ta'ala al haqq. Ala lisani au ala lisani hi. Imam Shafi, this great mountain of knowledge. He said, I've never spoken to a person and never have I been bothered ever that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala brings the truth upon my tongue or his tongue. This is how they were when it came to giving advice, discussions, debates. It wasn't about trying to prove themselves. It wasn't about winning the debate or the argument. It was about bringing each other to the truth. So whenever he would have a conversation with somebody or a debate or a discussion, it was never to try to overdo the per outdo the person. It was just to reach the truth. And when you have this in life, you become a lot more relaxed and not tense like many people are because they're always trying to outdo everybody else and win the conversation, win the debate. Of course, from the most important teachings that Islam gives us, as we touched upon, is to use the tongue in that which is good. Use the tongue in spreading tranquility. Use the tongue in spreading joy. And in today's society, where YouTube is basically the educator for the youth and those young adults and even sometimes elder people, because they watch so much of it, 
So much foolishness we see and we hear. So people, they start to say things without even thinking. They ridicule, make fun of people. Like you cannot imagine, like you hardly find a, a sitting now where somebody is not ridiculed or something is not said about a person in a negative way. And this is something that must be avoided. We must not speak about people unless there is a Sharia reason for us to do so. Sharia reasons, that's another topic. You have to find that out. When can you speak about somebody or when you should speak about somebody. But the general rule is leave people alone, whether he's Muslim or non-Muslim. Don't speak about the character of a person. Don't speak about the stature of a person. Don't speak about how a person looks. Don't speak about how a person walks, etc. Just leave the people alone. The Prophet ﷺ in the hadith of Abu Dawood and also Imam Tirmidhi, one of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, I believe it was Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, hasbuka min safiya kadha wa kadha, ta'ni qasira. She said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, this other wife of yours, Safiya, you know, she's like this. And she was saying, you know, she's short. So she didn't even say the word. She said, like, she's like this with her hand. And a gesture is considered a word. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَقَدْ قُلْتِ كَلِمَةً لَوْ مُزِجَتْ بِمَاءِ الْبَحَرِ لَمَزَجَتْهُ Verily you have said a word that if it was to be put into the sea, it would spoil the sea water. I mean, that one word is so destructive to your good deeds. So we have to be extremely careful how we speak about other people. We have to ensure that we don't ridicule people. And we have to try to bring our kids up not to be from those who think it's cool to do so. Why don't you be the one who has the strength and the courage to stand up for people? Imagine the reward you would get from that. In one of the narrations, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever defends his brother in his absence, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the fire haram upon his face. Be from that person. Defend the people instead of buying into the ridicule and the making fun of them. Islam, through the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, also taught us how to speak. In the sense that when we speak, we should try to ensure that our speech is not rushed. And that we try to speak in a confident manner. Now this of course takes some practice and it takes maybe one not caring about who's listening. Not in a rude sense, but in the sense that if you're speaking for Allah's pleasure, it doesn't matter if the people are pleased or not, right? So this way you get confidence, but not in the arrogant sense. So Islam also teaches that when we speak, we should speak with clarity. Because the more clarity you speak with, especially when giving, giving da'wah, the more people are going to listen to you. And who was the one who made du'a for clarity in his speech? Musa alayhi salam. رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْأُقْتَةَ مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي He made dua to Allah when giving da'wah that Allah make my affair easy for me, expand my chest, untie the knots from my tongue because he was going to give da'wah. So clear and apparent speech is something which is important for the ones who are trying to give da'wah and in general for the Muslim as he communicates. He shouldn't be one who mumbles, he shouldn't be one who is shy when he speaks, he should be confident and he should own his speech. The Prophet وسلم, as narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha in Bukhari, she said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يحدث حديثا لو عده لعاد لأحصاه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to speak in a way that if somebody was to follow his speech, they would be able to gather it all together. Meaning that it was concise and it was clear to the point. Right? Some people when they speak, the thing only needs a few words, but they go on and on and on. You're just waiting for them to stop speaking. It can be said in a very uh, concise manner, then it should be said in a very concise manner. And also from this, is that when you are teaching something, or when you are trying to give an instruction to a people, whether it's your children, whether it's in the office at work, or wherever it may be, then you should repeat the instruction. The Prophet ﷺ used to do that, as narrated by Anas in Bukhari. The Anas radiallahu anhu, he said, كَانَ إِذَا تَكَلَّمَ بِكَلِمَةٍ أَعَادَهَا ثَلَاثٍ That the Prophet ﷺ, when he would speak with a phrase, he would repeat it three times. Something of importance, the Prophet ﷺ would repeat it. Okay, to ensure that the listener truly understands the intent of what is being said, if the matter is important. 
one of the detested manners of speech is that somebody speaks in a way that he thinks that his voice is God's gift to earth. You have people like this. Their voice is so loud. There's a conversation taking between you and the other person. Sorry, between that person and you. But he wants everybody in the office to hear. Or everybody in the playground or wherever you be. This type of voice is detested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather when you speak, you speak in a, a normal tone. Unless you naturally have a loud voice. But you don't try to raise your voice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Luqman, وَغْضُدْ مِنْ صَوْتِكَ إِنَّ أَنْكَ لَسْوَاتْ لَسَوْتُ الْحَمِيرِ Lower your voice, because the worst of speech, the worst of sounds, is the sound of the brain donkey. So Allah is likening the one who raises his voice for no reason to making the sound of a brain donkey, which is a very, you know, uh, izaj. What's izaj? A very annoying, a very annoying, harsh, annoying sound. So it's something we should avoid. Avoid. When is it recommended for you to raise your voice? We're saying that you shouldn't normally raise your voice, but there are times when it's recommended. When is one of the most common times? When you're giving the adhan, of course, unless you have a microphone. You don't want to burst people's eardrums. When else? When you are making the khutbah, if you're the khatib, then be like the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu used to give khutbah with so much energy and so much power. In fact, his face would go red from the amount of power that he would put into his speech. Okay? When one speaks, they shouldn't try to overdo the complexity of their speech. Choosing super exotic words and words which are above four syllables, etc. If there's no need for that, don't do it. Keep your speech simple and so that the people can easily understand what is being said. The Prophet Sallallahu he likened the person who does this, who's always choosing long technical words that really don't need to be chosen or need to be used. In Abi Dawood, the Prophet Sallallahu said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ أَزَّ وَجَلْ يُبْغِضُ الْبَلِيغُ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ أَلَّذِي يَتَّخَلَّلُوا بِلِسَانِهِ تَتَّخَلَّلَ الْبَاقِرَةِ بِلِسَانِهَا The Prophet Sallallahu likened, or he said that Allah Azza wa is angry with the one who when he speaks, he swishes his tongue around his mouth, like the cow swishes its tongue around the mouth when it's trying to eat. So you know some people, they just, you can tell that they're tripping over these words. It's not, it's not their natural speech. They're really, it's not natural the way they, they're choosing these long and complex words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like that in speech because that's a type of showing off. But if you're naturally of that level of intellect and you naturally have that type of speech, then that's okay. But if you're not at that, te- at that level, it's not your natural speech, then you shouldn't speak in that manner because it's a type of showing off. One of the prohibitions which are very important, very relevant to us is that we shouldn't speak about everything we hear. We shouldn't be that walking broadcast station. Right? And many people are like this. Every morning they've got something to say. Did you hear what such and such said? Did you hear what took place there? Every moment they love gathering the news and they love spreading it. This is disliked in Islam for many reasons. First and foremost, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in the Hadith in Muslim, كَفَى بِالْمَرْءِ كَذِبْ أَنْ يُحَدِّثَ بِكُلِّ مَا سَمِعَ The Prophet Sallallahu said, it suffices a person to be a liar or to be lying that he narrates and relates everything that he hears. So that person, every time he hears something, runs around and tells the people. You have to make, you have to have a filter in your life. The filter first and foremost has to be, what I'm about to tell people, is it beneficial? Because sometimes you can tell a news to a people and it's going to spoil their day. There was no need for them to know that. It's going to really upset the people, make them panic for no reason. The second filter, which is very important, was it truthful? Many times people, they don't make the thabbut. They don't check. They just read something somewhere and they run around and they spread it. And WhatsApp messaging is from the worst of this. You may not be speaking it, but you're spreading it very quickly, the news and the message, without thinking, is this actually true? Is it beneficial? You know, am I being made a fool of by this information? And sometimes, unfortunately, the Muslims, they spread things which are so far from the truth, it makes them look foolish. So we have to be very careful not to fall into this, not to be the one who's always spreading things with his mouth. 
or on the WhatsApp or other types of social media. We should be people who have a filter. We think, is this beneficial? We think, is it going to uh, is it going to bring me reward? And, for, and, and importantly, is it something which is truthful? Pertaining to being truthful in speech, sometimes people, they think they can get away with not being truthful. They become, in the conversation or in the gathering, they become the center of attraction. Because you have some people like that, mashallah, Allah has given them a very nice way of speaking. It's very enjoyable to listen to some people. They can make you happy very easily. They can entertain you very easily. But sometimes a person can get carried away. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith in Abu Dawood, وَيْلٌ لِلَّذِي يُحَدِّثُ فَيَكْذِبُ لِيُضْحَكْ بِهِ الْقَوْمِ وَيْلٌ لَهُ وَيْلٌ لَهُ The Prophet ﷺ said, Woe, yani wail, to the one who speaks and lies to a people so that they will laugh at him, to laugh at what he is saying. So the person lies in order to entertain people, lies to make jokes. Okay, this is something which is not allowed in Islam and it's attached to a warning from the Prophet ﷺ, a warning from Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Wailun lahu, wailun lahu. He mentioned it twice in the end of the hadith. So what is this wail that you find mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah? What is this word wail mean? Wail. Wailun lil musallin. You hear in the Quran. Afwan? Oh, valley, ahsant. Yes, Zakallah khair. So that's one of the interpretations of it, that it's a valley in the hellfire. It's a place where some people will be punished, right? It's a valley in the hellfire. Another interpretation is that it's the words that somebody says when the punishment that they deserve comes upon them due to the misguided deeds that they were doing. So in any case, it's a, it's a statement of regret and woe, or it's a place in, in the hellfire where a person is going to be punished. May Allah protect us. From the good and beautiful etiquettes of using the tongue to create social harmony is that don't leave people out in the conversation. You know, sometimes that happens, right? Sometimes naturally we have quiet people around us, well behaved. So what tends to happen, you're having a conversation, you just leave him out completely because you think he doesn't care. Even though he's quiet and well mannered, he may still feel something in his heart that why are you just leaving me out? Why are you not involving me in the conversation? Involving in the conversation can just be having a look at the brother with the eyes and just, you know, a smile, just a nod of the head to ensure that he feels engaged. And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu said in Sahih Muslim. He said, إِذَا كُنْتُمْ ثُلَاثَ فَلَا يَتَنَاجَ إِثْنَانَ دُونَ الْآخَرِ حَتَّى تَخْتَلِتُ بِالنَّاسِ فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ يُحْزِنُهُ The Prophet Sallallahu gave this beautiful teaching. He said, if there's three of you, then two of you should not be involved in the conversation except that the third is also involved. Unless and until you mix with another group of people, because that will upset the person. So the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that if there's a third person with you and two of you engaged in the conversation, make sure that that person is also getting a feeling of being involved with you, whether it's through the speech or whether it's through just looking at the person and making uh, motions with your eyes, etc., to ensure that you acknowledge the person is there with you. There are exceptions to this at times. Uh, for example, the ulama, they say, um, like, if the person's alone, you can't seek his permission. You can say to him, brother, do you mind? I have something very important to say to such and such. I'll be with you in just a moment. So if he gives you permission, then you can go ahead and do so. That's one example. Another example, uh, for example, is like when you're in a gathering in your house maybe, and your uh, child comes in, and you need to give him instruction. Okay? Or the male maid, the male uh, maid comes in, and you need to give him instruction like, "Go and get the food now." So you will whisper to that person, and the person next to you didn't hear what you were whispering, okay? Because there was a, there's an adab, Islamic adab in serving the guests. You don't normally let the guest know that you're about to serve him food, because you don't want him to be embarrassed in any way, shape, or form. You just bring it out. In some of our cultures, in some of our communities, brother, are you hungry? Are you sure you're hungry? Shall I feed you now? What shall I feed you? You know, you really make the person feel that, oh my God, I shouldn't have asked or I shouldn't have let him know that I was hungry. It's not like this in Islam. Islam, you just present the food to the person when he's your guest. In any case, the hadith was saying and teaching us that we shouldn't speak to the exclusion of another person if there's three of us, two speaking and one not speaking. From the good etiquettes that we need to practice when speaking, something which is for some of us difficult to do, we need to smile when we speak. 
We need to try and smile when we speak. The Prophet ﷺ is narrated about him as collected by the hadith in Imam Ahmad's Musnad. Narrated by Abi Darda, he said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يحدث حديثا إلا ابتسامة. Okay? إلا ابتسامة. That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم never used to speak except that he was smiling. So many a time you find that somebody has something which is so important to say and he's so correct in what he's about to say. But the people won't accept it because he's frowning. He has that frown on his face. He has a look as though he's angry. So sometimes you're giving advice to somebody. Your advice is beautiful. But the way it's being given due to the frown on the face turns the person away. Yeah, had that same person smiled, right? Unless you have my type of face, which even if I smile, I look scary, right? <laughs> then, you know, it's always better to smile when, you, when you're speaking to a person. Because in the person, you're softening their heart. They're going to take what you're saying a lot easier and a lot better and a lot more. And of course, there's situations where you can't smile. There's situations where you have to be a bit stern in life, right? And even the Prophet ﷺ was like that at times. Also from this speech, the good man is, is that you should look at the person when you're speaking them, to them. Don't be that person when you're speaking to someone, you're looking left, you're looking right. It's telling the person that he has no value to you. Or it's telling the person that you don't really care about what's being said. You want to look at the person in the eye. But don't do, as I mentioned to one of my sons, that when you look at me, it's as though you're going to kill me. He just has a blank look on his face. No, you have to make some expressions. Look at the person and make some expressions. Whether it be with the eyebrows, whether it be smiling, whether it be nodding, this allows the person to feel, as we said, that you're in be being engaged with them. Another etiquette also, which is very important, is that when you're in a gathering where you have elders, right, or you have people of knowledge, then don't speak so much. Be silent. Let yourself benefit from those who have that life experience, who have more wisdom than you due to what they've lived 20, 10 more years than you. Ex benefit from the knowledge of the knowledgeable people. Sometimes in the gathering with these people of knowledge, I don't know why people feel that they have to show the sheikh what they know. The sheikh knows what you know and he knows it better than you, than you know it. Just be quiet and benefit from what the sheikh is saying, his explanation. Okay, it will benefit you a lot more. So this is also from the manners of speech. If you're amongst elders or if you're amongst people of knowledge, then try to allow them to speak where it's uh, better for them to speak in those situations where it's better for them to speak. There is one place that we have to be extremely careful how we speak. I've already laid out the foundations of us being extremely careful. There's a place we have to be extra careful and that is when you speak to your parents. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-Isra, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّكْ إِنْدَكَ الْكِبْرِ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ Allah says in this verse that your Lord has decreed that you should worship none but Him. And that if your parents reach old age with you, then one of them or both of them, then do not even say to them, Uff. This uf is the lightest of speech that you can get in the Arabic language. Meaning it's the easiest of things to come out of your mouth. And it's normally said as a sign of displeasure or a sign of expressing difficulty. So the Mufassirin, they say that when you're doing something for your parents, may Allah give them long life, our parents, give them iman, give them taqwa, ameen. When you're doing something for your parents, like you're removing the filth that comes out after they visited the bathroom, that you are removing that for them, imagine how difficult that is. But that's one of their rights upon you, that when it comes to a stage when it's difficult for them to do so, that you have to remove that for them, then don't say, don't make that sound. So of course, anything beyond that cannot be said. If we can't even say, Pff. we can't say, mom, why'd you cook it like this? Dad, can you be quiet? I'm talking to my friend. May Allah forgive us the amount of times we've impressed our parents on. So this is something that we have to be extremely careful with. From the worst of things that the tongue can do is to speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his religion without knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah after he says, uh, Don't follow the footsteps of shaitan. He will, he will command you to do that which is evil and shameless. 
وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And to say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which you have no knowledge of. To say about the religion of Allah azza wa jalla that this is halal and this is haram without having the right to do so. Without being a scholar who can make those judgments and make those statements. Because when you speak as a scholar, you are speaking on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will be taken to account for saying what you said. Allah will ask you, how dare you say what you said? Why did you tell the people X, Y, and Z? Did you have that right from me? Meaning, did you have the knowledge? And even worse than that is to speak about Allah's that, Allah's being himself. To say that Allah is like this or he's not like this. You know some people, a lot of philosophers in the past and the present, they denied the beautiful names and attributes of Allah Azawajal. Because in their minds, when we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, they said, how can you say Allah loves? That's a human attribute. So they denied this attribute from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and many others. And this is the worst type of speech. Who are you to speak about Allah Azawajal without knowledge? If Allah says he has an attribute or he does a thing, we have to affirm that. Even if we don't understand the reality of that thing. There is nothing like unto Allah. Yet he sees and he hears. So Allah says nothing is like unto him, yet he has attributes. He hears and he sees. Even if you think it resembles you, Allah is saying, no, it doesn't resemble you. Allah is uniquely the way he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala, perfect in all things. To end, we gave just an introduction upon this beautiful topic of the mannerisms of the tongue. But reflect upon this statement, what the Prophet ﷺ said, as collected by Imam Ahmed. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا يستقيم إيمان العبد That the iman of a person is never going to be strong and upright. حتى يستقيم قلبه The iman of a person is never going to be upright and strong until his heart becomes upright and strong. There's so much focus that needs to be on the heart. We forget about the dhikr and the cleansing of the heart. وَلَا يَسْتَقِيمُ قَلْبُ الْعَبْدِ حَتَّى يَسْتَقِيمُ لِسَانُهُ And the person's heart is not going to be upright and strong until his tongue becomes upright and strong. So, oh you who is trying to please Allah by seeking knowledge, oh you who is trying to please Allah by worshipping Allah Azawajal, do not forget the importance of purifying the heart. And one of the main ways of purifying the heart is to protect the tongue. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes our tongue from those that remember him in all places and in all times, from a tongue that spreads good and forbids evil. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabidna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anything which was good and correct was from our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mistakes and shortcomings were for myself and shaitan. If you have any questions or corrections, then feel free. Wa jazakumullahu khair. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi.